Hey, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com. Today I'm down on the floor, I'm gonna be crawling around, I'm gonna be showing you how to slip cover a piece of furniture. And the best part about this is that you do not need a pattern. This method is can be used on anything, anything, from a, from a footstool to a sectional. So, Get this um, method in your your toolbox. If you're a DIY decorator, I know you will love it and use it your whole life. This is my chair before. <clears throat> yeah, I bought four of these Parsons chairs from Target. It's been 16 years ago. I stained them this nice color on the legs. I have had made several slip covers for them. They've been through three kids. They've been good chairs. They're still really solid, real classic straight lines, so I want to keep going with them. I had them outside a few years ago and I made these burlap slip covers. Note to self, burlap slip covers cannot go in the washing machine and they wear out pretty fast. So this is what they all look like now. I still think they're good chairs. They're still sturdy, they have great lines. Those are two things you're looking for with um, used furniture. Great lines and is it still really sturdy? The drawers need to slide well with dressers, things like that. I got this beautiful creamy linen that we're going to cover them with and so what we're going to do is we're going to have it fitted along the top and then down here I'm going to have, just like the burlap ones, I'm going to have um, some big pleats. Just simple pleats folded over. I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all you need to determine which side is the right side, the side that you want to show for the finish. So my linen has a little bit of a sheen in some of the weave. I would like that to show on the outside, so I'm gonna take this planer side and put that one up. You want the right side against your chair, okay? You're just gonna lay it, you're gonna figure out. Okay, you can kind of decide how many seams you want as you go along. The more seams, the more work it is but the more structure you get. So I I actually am not gonna do a seam here, but I am gonna do a seam around the sides. So, so I am going to have four sections to work with. So the first piece is gonna go from the front of the seat all the way down to the back. And then I'm gonna do two more pieces along the side, just a little strip along the side. So there's three. And then I'm gonna do the ruffle skirt along the bottom. So I'm starting with the first main part and you want to you want to lay your fabric down. You don't want it stretching too weird. So lay it in a real natural position and then I don't want to waste too much. I need a little bit of overhang because I'm gonna make my seams. Okay this is your first step and then I am literally going to cut around Leave an inch or two hanging over the edge of your furniture. If you're kind of nervous about the piece of fabric being big enough, you can just start pinning it in place. Just pin it right onto the upholstered piece. Okay? So like on the back here, it's kind of swinging away from the chair. And I just want to make sure I'm going to have enough on the side here to get a seam. So I'm going to actually pin it to the chair and make sure that it's big enough and it's not stretching really weird. Now I'm going to cut some strips. So again, find the side that I want. A little bit of shine is the one that I want. And I know I'm going to need two, so I'm just going to do this at the same time. And I just need about three, three or four inch strips on these sides. So I am going to, this is where the fun starts. I am going to start creating my seam line. I'm just going to feel along, I'm going to pinch alongside the outline of this chair and I'm going to start putting pin after pin after pin. I'm going to draw a line where I want this to go and you want it to be pretty snug, at least I do with this chair, nice and fitted. Okay. I'm going to continue all the way down and then it really starts to come together when you get both sides pinned in place. This is going to be your seam. It's that simple. No pattern. You just fit it 
to the outline of the piece of furniture. So that's what the inside looks like. So I'm gonna finish penning this on both sides and then I'm gonna take it down to my machine. And I'm gonna follow straight along where those pins are. I'm gonna take them all out and trim this down. Um, I like like a half an inch left over. Stitched along where the pens were. I didn't show you because it was kind of self-explanatory. I just replaced those, the pen line with stitching and I trimmed them. Sometimes I will trim the fabric before I sew it. The, the big thing is though, don't trim it too close to the seam. And you don't want to leave a ton of fabric in there because you, know, you want it to lay flat. I'm just going to check it here. Um, but you also don't want to get too close to the seam because I've done that before and then you wash it once and it all falls apart and there's nothing you can do to fix it because the fabric's just gone. Okay, so then for my ruffles, this is what it looks like. So I'm not even measuring. I've started, I, I cut a strip of fabric and make it long, let it hang on the floor. We're gonna hem it later. Wherever you start, Wherever you start, you're gonna leave a section of an extra amount of fabric hanging over because you're gonna need to close that up with a seam in the end. And then I'm just pinning along. I did uh, pin down this corner so I'm not accidentally pulling because that's pretty pretty close there. I don't want to run out of my fabric on that side while I'm working over here. I'm going about four inches and then I'm doubling over an inch and I'm just pinning it. You can skip these ruffles if that's not your thing. Don't worry about it. It's simpler without, but it's it's a uh, pretty and feminine looking if you do like it. Looks really great on an ottoman. Okay, so I'm gonna finish pinning all the way around. Okay, I'm running out of fabric. I'm gonna show you what to do if this happens. Ideally, I would have stitched an extra piece on here. I do have an extra piece. Um, I would have done it beforehand. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the same method that I've been using so far. Again, you want to find the, the right side and you want to turn that away from you. I'm going to just stitch together this thing. While I actually sew on the ruffle, I'm going to have to take a second and run a seam here for this add-on. Okay, so there's my add-on, not a big deal. We just, we're just gonna keep on going. Now I definitely have plenty. Okay, so again, about four inches, I'm going to come in. All right, so I'm getting ready to close it up. You might not need to see how to do this, but I'm just gonna show you in case you're nervous about this part. So I'm to the end, and once again, I'm just gonna add in exactly where I want the stitches to be, and I don't really care how big the seam allowance is. That's not important, because we're not using a pattern. We're just gonna draw a reasonable line where we want this to finish off, okay? Then I'm gonna take this down and I'm gonna stitch straight along where those pins are all the way around. I'm gonna trim it down and then we're just gonna talk about how to finish it off on the bottom and we'll be done. So I'll meet you back up here in a minute. So there we go, starting to look really feminine. And now I just need to hem it and I like a big wide hem, so like a three inch hem. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So again, I'm not measuring because I like to cut corners whenever I can. So I leave it on the chair and I am going to find 
where the bottom hits the floor. I don't mind it draping on the floor. I think that's really pretty. I don't want it too much so that when you slide it in, you're like getting caught on it. So I don't want to overdo that. But you want it to hang down and then start cutting about oh three inches away from that rough line there. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll this under about a quarter inch and then stitch it in place. So I opened up the, these side hems. There's two of these on the skirt. Open them up just so they lie a little flatter and then I'm not gonna measure at all, but I'm just gonna go do about a quarter inch, flipping it over like this, okay? I'm gonna spin it on the board and we're gonna go all the way around. Okay, and now I'm folding it up. Uh, you can just decide. I've got maybe an inch and a half. You could go up to even three inches. I just want to make sure I've got good drape on the floor when I'm finished. So, and I'm going to iron that in place as well. And then when I come back through and I stitch, I'm not going to do a super tight stitch because I don't want it to get all bunchy. I still want this to be kind of loose. So I'm going to do a nice wide loose stitch and stitch that in place. And then we will look at the finished product in a moment. All right, we are all done. And you, maybe you can see behind me the sun has set, so I need to be going and making some dinner. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that and you feel like you can do this with, you know, whatever piece of furniture that's bothering you. This even works for recliners. So I did a huge blog post years ago about how to slip cover recliners and so I will link that um, below for you guys. But that is the same concept. I had piping, I had moving parts and, you know, the footrest coming out and stuff. But um, same concept. This is, if you can handle this, you can move on to more um, more advanced projects but um, thank you so much for stopping by and if you're new here please consider hitting that subscribe button I post regularly and I share my professional design advice and our vintage home life all right take care and I will talk to you soon